How bored was Alice? Sitting by the riverside with nothing much to do, her sister occupied beside her with a book, a dullest exercise without a single page of art to please the eyes. And what's the use of that? But suddenly a white and wide-eyed rabbit hurried by, a pleasant sight but unremarkable enough on normal days, yet now there came about a matter to amaze a little girl in any mood. The rabbit talked. Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be late, he said, and walked as he was muttering. To Alice's surprise, he had a coat, and in a most unbunny-wise display, he pulled a pocket watch to check the time. As Alice walked along, a freakish episode began. A nearby pool of water overflowed with parrots, eagles, dodos, ducks, and many more. So Alice led the crowd of animals to shore. It truly was a sight to see the flock of birds and pack of animals. There aren't many words that could describe the stringy feathers and the fur all sopping wet. Disgruntled sounds would not deter weary Alice as she helped to dry their hair and fur and feathers with the kindliest of care. Outside the house, beneath a tree, there was a sight to see. A hare and hatter having tea, and right between, a dormouse fast asleep. The other two were leaning forward on the mouse, conversing through its furry form, and Alice thought, it's hard to sleep through that. The three were near the end, as if to keep the table clear, but hare and hatter shouted out, no room, no room, when Alice came. I really doubt it, Alice said indignantly. She found a chair and sat nearby. The king and queen were sitting high upon their throne amidst a great assembly, which by now had grown to every member of the kingdom, bird and beast alike, and many visitors from west and east, and all the playing cards. And Alice saw the knave of hearts in chains with hosts of soldiers looking grave and stiff. She saw the rabbit by the witness stand, all white and proud. He had a trumpet in his hand, a scroll of parchment in the other. Best of all, thought Alice, was a table right against the wall that overflowed with cherry tarts.